Hello, I'm Keith at Atkins and welcome to my video channel. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the uh, back gearing of a lathe, of a sense lathe. Uh, this is this uh, box right here, this is the one in question. And what you should do before you use the back gear to keep it operational in good condition all the time. So here we go, let's have a look at this, see what we can do. I'm going to readjust the, the camera so we can get a better view. <coughs> and this is the back gearing uh, lever here, which replace, which changes the speed to a lower speed. Um, normally, uh, for instance, the, the setting at the moment is on um, 210 or 40 revolutions per minute in the back gear. Okay. So, so you'll notice at the moment, um, this machine is set at either 210 RPM, reps per minute of the spindle, in normal drive, or you can get to as low as 40 reps per minute in the back gear. So what I'm going to do is, is to show you now what the 210 Reps per minute looks like so you can compare it with the uh, 40. And there you see the spindle going round and that's <coughs> rotating at 240 revs per minute. <coughs> so I'll just stop it now and now we're going to activate the back gear. Now the back gear is that's the lever here. Just be a bit nearer to show you if we can. Yep. That lever there, and you'll notice that on the, the headstock here, there's like a, a grease nip, a grease point there and one there. That's for greasing the, the spindle. <coughs> now, in the middle there, there's a hole. The hole is there, not just for fancy. It's there for a special purpose, and that's so you can look inside. Look in. I can't show anything in the hole because I can't get the camera near enough. But inside there. It's, there's a hole that, that activates this spindle lock, which we've discussed in a previous video. So you, what you need to do is to, if you missed it, or if not, if you're just joining us, um, subscribe to the channel, and then you'll not miss anything. You can always go back on it, and if you like the videos, uh, give us a like. We'd appreciate it. So when you've located there, that spindle lock, when you've taken a chuck off, Inside there, there's a grease, uh, an oil, an oil nipple, similar to that one there. It's like a little ball, and you get your oil can, push it in a bit, and then you can do the oil, you can do the oil thing as well. Uh, pump oil into it. Same as this one there, one there, one there. All you do is put the oil can in, push it in, put some oil in. This is just the same. So in here, though you can't see it, there is a little oil like that. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is, before we use this back gear, find the location of the... Put my glasses on for this. Uh, find the location of the... Uh, that's it. Oops. And then put some oil in. Okay, so that's been done. Also, um, people sometimes forget this, but it's very important. Um, at the back of the machine, over here, and then the tailstock, there's another thing that you should do. So if I open this, uh, I'll try to get a better view of it. Oh, there's a button there, and this opens this. Now if I come round here, oh, you might be able to see this. Um, Put some more light on the subject. Uh, let's see. Yes. So here is where the tumbler reverse gear lever lever is to activate this tumbler reverse. See. And then alongside, let's put some more light on it. That's better. Don't know, it's difficult to see. I think that's not too bad. 
<coughs> but you will see where I'm pointing there there's another ball point for lubrication another cylinder that runs parallel to the, to the spindle there so what you need to do is to as I said before I'm moving things up and down here look um, these videos of mine they all go out live as they've been well that is as they've been recorded uh, I don't edit my videos and then if I just show you that that's where the oil thing is and then you can oil it there and oh, it'll drop there never mind so you do that first just needs a couple of squirts and that's and that's okay so having done that having done that you've got oil all over your hands because there's all when you're using oil cans you always get residues of oil so I don't like it I have put some barrier cream on but you don't want your hands slippy so now we've done this <coughs> we can close the rear guard okay that's locked into position with this device down here there that's locked in position and now we can concentrate on moving the uh, the back gear lever on this machine it was quite different to some some of you have got box for to, to, to a rear drive this one's an underdrive on the old rear drive ones there's two levers there's one here that swings around this way and there's one at the back there <coughs> you do that one and this one that does it this model is an underdrive model uh, and it's a signal lever which sounds very nice but it is but in order to do it you've got two screws here I don't know if you can see them I think you can yeah one there one there two two allen cap screws so they're both captive one is tightened up and one is loose so that's in the main drive now to get this into the back gear you have to do is unslacken that I've already pre um, unscrewed it with a, an allen key but it's, it doesn't have to be tight <coughs> and when that's <coughs> free that's free anyway you can then press down on the lever and move it into that position now it may not click in straight away so all you do is just turn that you see and it, it's locked into position position when you've done that it now is located in underneath this screw so you just tighten tighten that screw up there yeah and then you can try and you can start the machine and see the difference but you may not be able to do that at this stage I'll tell you why so it won't start because what's happened is that in the so all my videos go out <laughs> as I record them this is not an error but I did it deliberately to show that there's a micro switch underneath where the screw locates once the micro switch is activated it switches the machine off and you have to go to the start procedures again which I'm going to do now with this uh, device here which is an inverter which controls the speed so I have to start that again um, by resetting it and that's set at 210 I can start the machine but I can now start it with my normal starting lever there which is a, a switch switch gear so now it should start and then you'll see the difference between the RPM at 210 and the difference 
when it's coming at 40. So there we are. Vast difference. Now it's really, really, really slow. <coughs> well, 40 RPM, you might think it's slow. But I can tell you, it's not the slowest, the slowest RPM that you can get on, on some machines. Um, the slowest, I'll just, I'll just switch this off. Um, the slowest, I've got to readjust this. I'll sit down in this chair. Well, that's what happens when you're not, <coughs> you've not got a cameraman. <laughs> so I have to do everything. Never mind. What I was saying is that this RPM at 40 looks slow. Um, but the slowest machine that I've ever worked on, I'd. Um, only one speed and you find this incredible incredible that the machine only turned quite slowly <laughs> at one revolution per minute only one speed one rev a minute what's what good is that if people say or ask well the machine was a special purpose lathe and it was designed for turning rolls in a rolling mill in steelworks um, in particular, the rolls that that particular machine was made to do weighed about eight tons and they were about four foot four feet in diameter. So that's why it only had one speed at one RPM, and uh, it was very antiquated and <laughs> it was over a hundred years old when I used it. But it's uh, <clears throat> it's been replaced by a modern a profile cutting machine with multi speeds and you maybe have to get onto the tool post there uh, by climbing up a ladder <laughs> they're pretty big machines anyway um <clears throat> what i was saying that's that's the, the slow speed and because you've oiled it now you can you can operate it um I put it back onto the uh, higher speed settings. I don't very often use this particular feature because I use the higher speed range. So if you remember what we did, I'll just uh, try to I guess I'll keep the camera there um, as much as we can. <coughs> you don't have to really tighten these. Oh, I was going to show you um, what happens if to show you that the, mi the micro switching there will stop the machine. So here we go. See the machine's going. I've got to unslacken that one and move that back into the position it was in previously. So I have to unslacken this one. <coughs> See, stop. Stopped on its own. I tighten it back up. It won't start because it's cut off the power. <coughs> then I have to go up to the start procedure again. So I'm unslackening that. They both slack. Press on the lever, move it over. Didn't have to turn it this time because it locked in automatically on its own. And then we're back onto the other screw. You must turn this down. Okay. That's locked in position. This is free. It doesn't really need tightening up because well, it just doesn't. But you can nip it up with an Allen key if you want to. Now I have to go back through the start procedure again for this particular machine, which is this here. Uh, reset. Reset it there. Um, my gear, switch gear is as a stop. I'm now going to program this in. There's a code, 1.3, hit that button, press start, and it's set at 210, although you might not be able to see it, it's a, 
digital readout at 210. <coughs> and that tells me I can now start this machine with the um, with this with this electrical switch gear here. Uh, not really can see it. Oh. Yes, that's the, that's the switch gear there. So there you can see, machine's activated, up and running, and I'm in business again. So, I shall switch it off. Uh, and that's it. So if you remember this, if you remember to, before you use the back gear, and you can use the back gear in, in any uh, configuration you like. Uh, for instance, uh, the lowest speed on this machine is 40 RPM uh, and in a high gear ratio is 210. So in the high gear ratio it, it goes from 340 and you can get 66 revs per minute on the low gear ratio which is, is A and B or 540 on a high will give you 105 RPM on the low ratio. Um, 850 to 165 or the highest uh, 1400 revs per minute down to 270 in the B position um, you might you might not be able to read the numbers there but there's also a little diagram showing you the um, pulleys that you can activate uh, the pulleys are in a, a, a lower cabinet there which I very rarely touch because um, I don't need to, because I've got the advantage of, <coughs> excuse me, of the uh, inverter with digital readout there, and uh, it obviates the need to keep changing pulleys. It's very good in some respects. It's got advantages and disadvantages because uh, the, it needs <laughs> to be warmed up correctly. It can get a bit temperamental and cut out, but it doesn't happen too much. And um, um, I still find it a useful asset in that, in that respect. So there you are. Um, I hope you find this, this useful, but people very often forget to lubricate their back gear. So if you want to engage your back gear, make sure you've got some lubrication there. Otherwise it, it could seize up. And some of it's not used too much anyway, but remember, that's what you must do. So uh, I hope it's been a little bit a useful tutorial on this. Uh, if there's any questions about uh, machines and things like that, in addition to give us a like or, or subscribe or subscribe to the channel, um, you can ask any questions or comments. And if, if, if any particular subject that you'd like me to cover, um, make a few comments or you can contact me uh, by going on to uh, the, my website, which is clint.co.uk, which is accessible for, for when you, you find my uh, <coughs> Keith at Clint uh, on the YouTube under us, and it will, there's an automatic link, just touch it, it directs you directly to my website and tells you about the hypergraph and tattoo machines, which um, I'm going to show you in future videos um, there will be tutorials covering all the skills needed for you to make a hypergraph <laughs> and uh, I'll show you how to do that in future videos but please leave comments anything you want to know give us a call I mean drop us a comment I'll get back to you just as soon as I can okay well, thanks for watching uh, remember to subscribe and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, thanks very much. And remember, happy turning. Bye. Oh, still realise that. <laughs> 
still re realise the video is video's still running, um, which, as I said, is um, I don't edit my videos. Um, for some reason, didn't switch off. So, once again, happy turning. Bye for now. See you next time.